Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Mavericks. We've got another video for you guys today. Today we got in this melon. Uh, it's out of state one. It's a micro center USB. Yes, it is. Now usually when you have something branded, um, it's obviously maybe not theirs uh, in particular because they don't manufacture. They just might put a brand on it. But uh, it's in this nice blue color, just like my gloves, just like our blue colors here. And we get melons because we do data recoveries. I think someone actually watched one of the videos before they said they watched one of the bent USB videos and they think this USB is bent, so they're in here for data recovery. It's kind of bent, it's a little bit, maybe not. It looks pretty good for the most part, so I don't really think that's really gonna be the problem, but we could take it in anyway. Um, we're uh, close to Washington, D.C. and we're in Northern Virginia, so we get a lot of like melons. Uh, repairs so if you're local you should come on by and say hi we're always here and we always love to see people too uh, come in so definitely do that um, but let's back to this one uh, so we're in here uh, the drive isn't being recognized it's showing as unallocated so that means when you plug it in you do get that type of problem and yeah we tried that and that it seems to be the case for it when you get something that's unallocated when you show it can be in like a disk management or if something isn't mounting in like um, disk utility for max there's obviously a problem, right? It's not able to do something. So maybe it's trying to read and then something has a problem. Uh, for these ones, these are USBs, they have what's called a controller on there and the co controller, uh, when you plug it in, um, that's where the power data lines go through the controller and then from there you have access to the data which is on the NAND itself there. So some people think if there's a damaged connection, right, you break off uh, pads, you break off connections in here and then we need to fix them to connect to the controller and then from the controller you need to access the NAND. So usually when you have an allocated, you have a problem with the controller. So that's fine, we can still work with those as well. So I think the best thing to do now would be just to take a look under the microscope and see what's going on. We'll crack this little bad boy open. These are plastic ones that are, so they're not too uh, difficult to do that. I'll just open it and then I'll expose it and we'll see from there. Now, a lot of times you just wanna be careful with it you wanna have, because you have an exposed USB, you don't wanna knock. It's very easy to, to knock components. I, I suggest too, if, if uh, unless you know what you're doing, try not to, to open it either because what are you gonna do? You're gonna see in here if there's a knock component, it's easy to do that. And if you have a missing component, it's gonna be more difficult to do a recovery. So um, always wanna be careful. But we do have the USB here and the USB looks okay. Like the, that connection actually looks to be okay. It doesn't look to be too bad. Um, so let's see what's going on. Let's go under the microscope, see if we can see anything obvious. We wanna check the first point because uh, we wanna see if it's bent or damaged and then we work our way back there. Because when you have a contact with it, right, you'll see if there's any type of connection or any type of damage. And if you see on the side, it looks to be pretty good. The pads look to be good here. So <laughs> you guys might not know what I'm talking about. So the pads, so these are the pads here, right? And this is what connects the main USB. A lot of common USBs have like uh, four connections on there and there's pads. And sometimes the pads can be lifted, which is, which is bad too, because if the pads are lifted, that's what connects the main USB power and data lines to the, the board which communicate with other stuff. And we also noticed something else there, and maybe, maybe this actually happened from before, is that we have a little bit of flux here, so it looks like maybe someone tried to fix it. So maybe this was bent at one time, and the pads, pads will be fixed, but I don't see any type of trace or something like that. So maybe somebody worked on it. Well, not maybe, somebody did. Because if you see a lot of this brown goop around there, that's flux, that means someone used a hot iron. That means someone used hot air, and possibly a hot iron, and did some work there. So. We need to see what's going on or why that happened, because at least the board looks to be okay. The, pit, the damage looks to be uh, not here, local. So now we need to go back and let's see here. And when we go here, we see that um, there is a controller. And this is obviously not gonna, <laughs> not gonna say micro center on it. Otherwise, man, I'll, I'll be curious to see <laughs> what exactly they do. But if you look closely, you can see there it is. This is what it's called, uh, there's US, uh, USB. Nope, USA best or US best, and then it has a controller number. So this is what's gonna to communicate to it. Um, some people, if, if you see damage to this controller, this is what's gonna help read to the rest of it. Um, then uh, we sometimes you can replace it. If not, in this video, what we're gonna be going over more would probably be doing a recovery to not use that controller, right? Because the controller is most likely bad. That's usually the case for them. Um, I think we can plug in the thermal cam, right? Let's see, because if, if we see this light up, usually when you get a good power, and good lines, that means you don't have a power issue, you don't have a connection problem, it means you have a controller issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and see, if I'm gonna go into the thermal camera real quick and uh, let's go ahead and check, take a look while we have it plugged in and see what we get. And we should be able to see something here, right? We plug it in, perfect, that's it. So when we see something like this, that means the connection actually is okay, right? And the controller is our problem because the controller is getting warm, 
but we don't have any access to anything else. So usually when you have something like this, this is a clear indication that the controller has a problem. If we saw something somewhere else, then we know that there is another problem, right? Because it's plugged in, looks work, the power is going from the, the USB itself, or from the head of the USB itself there, and then it's going to the actual controller, and it's, it's recognized, that's why it gets hot. What we need to do is, uh, if the controller is bad, um, you can do one of two things. You can either get a replaced one, if you can find one, especially on the older ones, it could be a little bit more harder to get, and then see if that will work. If not, you can do what we're gonna do here, and we are going to read the data directly from uh, the NAND itself there, and we have tools that will act as a controller. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want to make sure this is all cleaned up. Um, that's the most important thing because we need to connect it because all these uh, pins and legs connect it. So um, if there's any legs that are touching, then that's going to give a problem. We don't want to do that. So we have to make sure at least if it's, you know, especially if you're desoldering something that we make sure it's clean. So it looks clean for the most part. It's going to let it cool off a little bit. Oh, wait, do we have a little bit of a connection here still? I think we do. Okay, let's clean that. Okay, so this needs to clean off really well. So it looks pretty clean. And the idea is to have it perfect because the legs have to uh, communicate, right? They all, the legs mean something on each side. So let's go ahead and do this. Clean off. And you can see the NAND name too. It's very, very clear. Obviously, <laughs> because it's very, very clean. Okay. So the reason we did all that is so we can do this, right? And this is going to be our reader. So we need to plug in our chip reader. It's going to read this. Hopefully. And it needs to line perfectly. We need the pins to fit. So the pins look to be pretty good on that side. Check the other side. Pins look to be pretty good. Everything looks lined up. Everything looks like it's touching perfectly. It's perfectly symmetrical. That's what you want. Because that's important. Because we need to read it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go move over to our chip reader software and uh, go from there. So let's go ahead and see if this is going to work. Okay, so now we need to plug it in our tool. We need to read it correctly there. And we can see what's going on so we can actually work with uh, the NAND itself there and find a solution for it. It's always a lot of work because there could be lots of different other things that can give problems for that, uh, to just mainly find the, the solution. But we are able to do it for this one as we work with the drive extensively here. And if you can see, we can see the data. So as you can see, we were able to get the data off. We read the data directly from the NAND itself there, and we were able to get the customer's data. So um, if you guys are local in this area, definitely you check us out. You can come on by, say hi. We always love to say hi to you guys. Or if you want to mail it in, we, we take in all types of data recoveries, like spills and lots of other things too. So hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please leave a like. It really helps us a lot. Subscribe for more content. See you guys next time. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.